both slide up the racetrack, and here they come for the white flag. One more lap to go, and Allison has a slight advantage on Jarrett as they head for turn number one. But remember, Dale's been going well on the inside. He doesn't have the right line no more. Davey Allison keeps his car in the middle of the racetrack. Dale Jarrett's car is on the low side. Off the 18 degrees of banking, they go down on five degrees of banking, and Dale Jarrett wiggles a little bit as they come out of the second corner. They bump, they touch, they rub, going down the back stretch, side by side, wheel to wheel. Who is it going to be in the Champions Park Club 400? Jarrett has the slight advantage as they go into the third and fourth corners. Davey Allison battles back on the outside. It's going to be a photo finish. They touch coming down through the trioval at the line. Who wins it? I believe Jarrett. Oh, wow. <laughs> there he goes in that. Oh, wow. Dale Woo! Jarrett won it, but it was a photo finish. He didn't win by more than four or five inches. World's leader in motorsports coverage presents Speed World. Today, live from Michigan International Speedway near Brooklyn, it's the Champions Park Plug 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Beautiful weather in the Irish hills of southern Michigan, nearly cloudless skies and cool temperatures. And a near record crowd has turned out to see the points battle, the third closest in modern history. The quest for the cup standings show us that Bill Elliott is on top by 17 over Davey Allison. Alan Kowicki is third, followed by Harry Gant and Mark Martin, who's only 253 behind. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Bob Jenkins, and welcome to Michigan International. Certainly one of the favorites going into today's event is Davey Allison. He battled with Dale Jarrett to the closest finish in modern history last year at this time, with Jarrett winning by about six inches. But Davey Allison won going away here in June. But he has a lot of adversity and a lot of things on his mind today as he takes the green flag for this event. With more on that, here's Dr. Jerry Punch. Thank you, Bob. As if overcoming the pain of physical injury weren't enough, today, Davey Allison must bear the emotional burden of a devastating loss. Four days ago, his younger brother Clifford lost his life in a practice accident here at Michigan. But for the next three hours, Davey must put aside the hurt and concentrate on the task at hand. Davey knows that's what Clifford would have wanted. If you are among those who are watching who believe that race drivers are not athletes, I challenge you to find another individual who must overcome the physical and emotional adversity that faces one Davy Allison today. Where does he get his strength? He told me it comes from the plaque that hangs over his office wall that he sees every day when he goes to work. And the plaque reads, there isn't anything that can happen today that me and the Lord can't handle. And we're ready for the command to start engines. And for that, the Rookie of the Year at the Indianapolis 500 this year, the Grand Marshal. Start your engine! car field fires to life all set for 200 laps 400 miles of competition in the fastest field in history here at Michigan the Whistler Cup cars are incredibly fast this time at the Michigan International Speedway and that 16 cars broke the track record over 178 miles an hour Benny which means that they're running well over 190 miles an hour on the straightaway there are a number of reasons why they picked up speed this time one is the racing surface has been improved the Indy cars ran here last month and of course the winters are pretty harsh on the pavement here so the officials had to go in do a lot of work on the pavement but it made it a lot smoother made the cars a lot faster and the race cars are faster because NASCAR has mandated that the cars have a side window in the right side that's making the car more aerodynamic another thing the drivers have found that maybe a short track car works a little bit better here than a, su a super speedway car and that's a little surprising too at the speeds they run here but the fact that the turns are so long and the banking is only 18 degrees i can see where a short track car would work well well our pole sitter john kernan has he got a short track car or a long track car well, Benny, Alan Kowicki has got a super speedway car. That's what he told me just a few moments ago. You know, Mark Martin is starting on the outside of row one, and Kowicki has staged some amazing battles for the pole in the past couple of years, and this has got to be the best one. 
Kowicki winning the pole by only one one thousandth of a second. That's faster than you can snap your fingers. And speaking of Kowicki, he could become the man to beat for the Winston Cup. He stands third right now, 94 points out of first place. And he's coming up on a stretch of races, Bob, that he always does very well. So Allen could be the man to beat not only today, but for the rest of the year. Well, it's Alan Kowicki's 21st career poll in 192 starts. His last poll was in April at North Wilkesboro. This is the 15th Super Speedway poll and the first on the Super Speedway in 1992. We're getting set for Speed World coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 brought to you by Champion Spark Plugs, the world's number one selling spark plug no matter what you drive. By Valvoline, people who know use Valvoline. And by Pontiac and your local Pontiac dealer, we build excitement. A look at the 41 car starting field and Michigan International in detail in just a moment when we return. If you've got a lot of house to cover on a limited budget, get to Sears Whole House Paint Sale. Pick up Weather Beater Exterior Flat or Easy Living Interior Low Luster Semi-Gloss. Your choice, only $12.99 a gallon and Easy Living flat or soft white ceiling paint, both only $10.99 a gallon. So get to the whole house paint sale today. And save money at Sears. You can count on me, you throw up and come to me. ESPN Speed World coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway coming up. And the exciting Gillette Halfway Challenge is coming up in today's race where the driver leading at the halfway point will win $10,000, and a fan at home will have a chance to win a beautiful Chevrolet Lumina Z34. If you have entered the contest for this race and your entry is selected and you're called at home, you can have to name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge to win the Chevrolet. Now, if you want to enter the contest for our next event, which is coming up in a couple of weeks at Bristol, we must have your entry by the day before the event. Write us at Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33731, 2246. You must be 18 years of age or older to enter. You must receive your entry by the day before that event to be eligible for the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Now, let's take a look at the diehard starting lineup for today's event. On the pole, new track record, 178.196 is Alan Kowicki from Greenfield, Wisconsin, in the Hooters Ford Car 7. Then Mark Martin from Batesville, Arkansas in the Valvoline Ford car number six. Starting in third position is Davey Allison from Hueytown, Alabama, driving the number 28 Texaco Haviland Ford. Next to him is Ken Schrader, the best of the General Motors products, Benton, Missouri driver, the number 25 Kodiak Chevrolet. In row number three, it's Ernie Urban from Modesto, California in the Kodak Film Chevrolet, car number four. Alongside will be Conover, North Carolina's Morgan Shepard, driving the number 21 Sitco Ford. Starting in seventh position is Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, the winningest active driver at this track in the Budweiser Ford number 11. And then his teammate Sterling Marlin from Columbia, Tennessee, driving the number 22 Maxwell House Coffee Ford. Then Darrell Waltrip starts in ninth position in the Western Auto Chevrolet car number 17. Brett Bodine starts in 10th position in the Quaker State Ford number 26. In the seventh row, Terry Labonte and the defending champion Dale Jarrett. The eighth row, Kyle Petty and Bobby Hamilton, as you see Dale Earnhardt going down pit road. The ninth row, Derek Cope and Dick Trickle. Tenth row, Jimmy Hensley and Hut Strickland driving a Ford. In row 11, it's Richard Petty and Jimmy Horton. Twelfth row, Stanley Smith and Harry Gant. Row number 13 is Greg Sachs and Michael Waltrip. Fourteenth row, Wally Dallenbach and Rick Mast. In row number 15, it's Dave Marcus and Bobby Hillen. Chad Little and Eddie Bierschwale make up row number 16. In 17th row, Rusty Wallace and Lake Speed, Ted Musgrave and Jeff Purvis in row number 18. In the 19th row, Jimmy Means and Stan Fox. In the 20th row is Jeff McClure and Mike Potter. And starting in 41st position, row number 21 is Dale Earnhardt. And that's because he failed technical inspection after the second round of qualifying yesterday, putting him to the back of the pack. You know, Childress Earnhardt and that crew think of everything. He started 41st. He can't go any further back, so he stops after running one parade lap to put in a splash of gas. And get a little TV time. And get a little TV time. And Jerry Punch is right there. And that's exactly right, Benny Parsons. You hit the nail on the head. They figured it warming the engine up for you after it was loaded full this morning. They changed the engine, by the way, just before they put the car on the starting grid. Uses almost a gallon of fuel, so what do you have to lose? You're starting 41st, come top it off. You've got 22 gallons to take the green flag. That may be an advantage if you have to run a long green flag uh, effort on the track. So, nothing to lose for the Earnhardt team. 
just about to go racing here at Michigan International for 200 laps, 400 miles. Boy, you can't get many more people in here. A tremendous crowd on hand, and they are ready for an afternoon of NASCAR Winston Cup racing. So are we. We hope you are, too. The green flag flies, and we're underway. Still one thousandth of a second apart. Kawicki wins the first, the lap back to the far, start finish line for the first lap. But about a half a car length over Mark Martin as Davy Allison works to the inside of. Ernie Irvin. Now Irvin has third position, and this is the shot from Mark Martin's car. Running in second position, right behind the Hooters Ford of leader Alan Kowicki. And the telemetry will show you the speed and the RPM on the car. Down the back straightaway, which is probably a little bit slower, 190 miles per hour. Yeah, the front straightaway is it's not really a straightaway. The trioval here in the front is normally a little bit faster than the back, so we'll see how much speed it does get. I predict it's going to be upwards of 195 or so, folks. 94, 97 miles yeah. an hour, I saw. 98. 98. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, Alan Kowicki is your leader. Mark Martin running in second position. Davey Allison has moved to third. And the battle for fourth position is side by side. Bill Elliott to the inside, and that's Ernie Irvin to the outside. Looks like Irvin's car is pushing early on. I saw him up in turn four the last lap going extremely high. Let's see if he can hold the car down this time. Oh, boy, that was close between 22 and 25. Ball on the inside and Shredder on the outside. Also in this pack, Darrell Waltrip and others as once again we go inside. Morgan Shepard, Sitko Ford, and the battle is right in front of him. Terry Labonte beside him, now Ricky Rudd moving along beside Morgan Shepard. The drafting is such a key factor on this racetrack because of the speeds that we saw on Mark Martin's car there a moment ago. And getting a good drafting partner is, is important. Maybe not quite as much so as Daytona and Talladega, but it's very important here. King Richard Petty and his final starts at Michigan International Speedway began from the 21st position, qualifying at 175.725 miles an hour. Brett Bodine going back with the car number 26, and Jeff Bodine also having a little bit of trouble. He's going back. Brett caught up in that outside lane. His car just doesn't seem to work up there. He's in the green Quaker State Ford number 26. And the car right behind Richard is Bobby Hamilton, car number 68, and it is a four this week. Morgan Shepard trying to get on the inside of Ricky Rudd, he looks like he's got the spot made. Here comes Dale Jarrett trying to follow him. Morgan gets by, but Jarrett not able to draft along past Rudd. Here he goes on in the turn, and it looks like he's caught. Oh, Hamilton is spinning, and Jeff Bodine spins. Ooh, some heavy contact behind them. Is that more, that's Craig Sachs' car, I believe. Three cars involved in a crash on lap number five here at Michigan. There's Greg Sachs. He made hard contact with the outside wall after he was pinned up there. He appears to be able to make it to pit road, however, but two other cars, Jeff Bodine and Bobby Hamilton. I guess Hamilton continued on around. Jeff Bodine is against the wall in turn four, and here it is again. We see Hamilton go in the corner, and a car on the outside of him takes some of the air off. And around he goes. I guess that was Brett Bodine. Now Jeff spins, and that was Sachs that hit Jeff Bodine. Yeah, Jeff spun right up in front of Greg Sachs. Greg had nowhere to go. And we'll look at it again. You see the green car on the right of your screen, and that is Bobby Hamilton. The back end just gets loose. It looked like Harry Gant going by up on the outside, and or it's a green car at least. And Jeff Bodine spins and then shoots up the track into Greg Sachs. See all those cars going by on the inside. Now, Hamilton probably didn't get a lot of damage. No. He probably had the le least damage of all. He continued on. 
There's Jeff Bodine walking back to the pits. Tough break for him. Boy, it has been a Six. tough season for Jeff this year in the motorcraft board. So the caution is out at Michigan International after a three-car accident between turns three and four on lap number five. We'll be back with more of our live coverage in a moment. The champion spark plug 400 under caution because of a three-car accident and one of the ones suffering the most damage, Jeff Bodine in Motocraft Ford. His car still against the wall in turn number four. Bobby Hamilton's car sustained damage, and so did this one. Greg Sachs, he has taken it behind the wall. Bobby Hamilton uh, was the one to originally get sideways. Was there contact? I don't know. If the green car behind it looks like Brett Bodine. I don't think there was any contact or not. Well, he could have just have taken the air off the rear spoiler and around went Hamilton and so that leaves Sachs and Jeff Bodine no place to go. They meet nose to nose, and we can see the result of the their meeting, the Ford and Chevrolet. Uh, that cornflakes box is uh, crinkled, huh? Looks like it's been run over, by, run over by a truck. Jerry Punch is in the Jeff Bodine pit. We're with Greg Moore, who's the son of uh, Carl and Bud Moore. And Greg, what does uh, Jeff said? First of all, is he okay? Oh, yeah, Jeff, Jeff's okay and everything. A little aggravated. Uh, apparently, a car got sideways in front of him, and then another car hit him from the rear. Uh, I don't know, there's a lot of jockeying around going on right there at the first part of the race and people getting three wide, so I guess some people just got a little anxious, so, you know, it looks like we're done for the day unless we fix it. What about a damage report on the car? What has Jeff said? I know Jeff thought like we were out, but we're going to look at it. If it can be fixed, you know, we salvage a few points, we may do it. Uh, we've had a lot of bad luck here the past three or four races. Car's been running good, been competitive. We just can't have no luck, so we're not really in the points thing that much anymore. We'll take a look at it, though. Greg, thank you very much. Let's go up to John Kernan, and let's report on Greg Sachs. John? Jerry, Greg's car looks like it's pretty much out of it. A lot of damage here on the front. They've got a broken tie rod on the uh, right front suspension. Uh, radiator's been pushed back. The Kellogg's Corn Flakes crew is looking it over. They don't think that they're going to be able to get it uh, fixed to go back out and race. Greg has been taken to the infield care center. He's not hurt badly other than the fact that he bit his tongue, and they wanted to go check that out. Other than that, Greg gave me the thumbs-up sign that he's okay. He just bit his tongue and not feeling real well right now, as you might imagine. And the car badly damaged. And here's an interesting piece of numerology. Yesterday, Todd Bodine drove to victory in the Bush Grand National race here, starting in 12th position. Jeff was hoping that there would be the same luck because he started 12th in this race. But you can see that Jeff Bodine's race, if it isn't over, it's essentially through as far as winning is concerned. Yeah, don't think there's any chance that he could come back and win. And we see Mark Martin. We're looking at Mark from inside his car. Gear shift lever in second gear as he rides around the racetrack. Jimmy Hensley also carrying one of our in-car cameras, the Phillips 66 in-car camera, as he motors around Michigan at reduced speed. Getting set for a restart, but it's going to be a couple of more laps because they're still cleaning up the accident scene in turn number four. Glad you could be with us. It's a beautiful Sunday afternoon here in southern Michigan. Stay with us for more. Michigan International Speedway has always been one of the best for Richard Petty in the first seven laps of this race. He moved from 21st to 15th. This is his 48th start. He has four wins at this facility. Last one in August of 1981. 19 top five finishes. His last time five was in August of 82. We had a very interesting start here at Michigan International a few years ago. Here's Dr. Jerry Punch. This Richard Petty memory is brought to you by new STP engine treatment. Help stop engine wear before you start. A, start your engine! Michigan International Speedway, June 15, 1986. And Father's Day takes on a special meeting to Richard Petty as daughters Sharon, Lisa, and Rebecca help commemorate his 1,000th career start. It was emotional for me. I thought I was glad I had my sunglasses on where they couldn't see how emotional I got. But I'm not an emotional person, but when your daughters do something like that in front of all the people and like I say, it's a thousand start. That was a, that was a big, uh, another one of our big days uh, to have uh, to have them to do something like that. But like I say, they say, Daddy, start your engine, and then they finally let everybody else crank up. I told them I ought to give me a lap or two to hit start. It'd have been better off. Michigan under caution. And while we are under caution, let's show you our first Napa Field summary, how the cars were running under this caution. Several pit stops have been made during this caution period, but we're just about now to get set for more racing. See, Harry Gant made a pit stop and just put in a splash of gasoline, so I guess these guys are figuring that it might go green for pretty good ways, and they want to get all the gas they can in the car. 
Now Earnhardt came back in, and uh, several other cars. Of course, Bobby Hamilton came in to get his car checked out. And yeah. car number 77 with Mike Potter. Hamilton had minimal damage to his number 68. Derek Cope made a pit stop. He had a fender rubbing. He's okay, and the green flag is back out. Ernie Irvin making a move on Davey Allison as they head for turn one. Wow. He's got Davey, and he's also got second as he passed Mark Martin like he was tied to a post and now set sail for Alan Kowicki. How about that? Wow, did he have some momentum when he got past the start finish line? Mm. Yeah, we're talking about, always talking about Dale Earnhardt, what a great start he gets. Well, looks like Irvin is trying to copy Earnhardt. It's a fabulous start. Here's Morgan Shepard trying to move on the inside of Darrell Walter. Ooh, three of Rick. Strickland driving the board here for the first time. Backs off as Ricky Rudd back up on the outside of Dale Jarrett. Jarrett had just passed him before the caution came out. This track is 73 feet wide in the corners, and that's one reason why we see three, four, and sometimes even five abreast racing at this facility. Now Kyle Petty moving inside of Ricky Rudd. Kyle lost a few positions on the start there. He was up in front of Morton Shepard before the caution came out. And during the caution, but he lost a little bit there on the start. Ricky Rudd's car looks like this washing up a little bit in the turns, having a hard time keeping it down on the bottom of the racetrack. While passing the 77 driven by Mike Potter. Now, Davey Austin is a guy who lost him on this restart. He was running third when he threw the green. He's back about seventh or eighth already. So, uh, I don't know what his problem could be. Hot Strickland in the board, as Ned said, and there's our winner from last week, the rain shortened Watkins Glenn Budweiser with the Glenn, Kyle Petty, coming up on Ricky Rudd, who slides up the racetrack. Yeah, Red's been doing that on almost every corner. But Todd Chevrolet just not staying down quite as well as he would like for it to. Richard Petty coming along right behind. Baby else. else. Yeah, he has slipped back. He's back to sixth position now. Coming back a little bit as he's moving alongside now Ken Schrader in the 25 Kodiak Chevy. He must have missed a shift or something on the start of the race. You know, his hand, his right hand, his shifted hand is the one that's, that has all the injuries, so maybe he has some trouble shifting the car. Jerry Punch, do you have, know anything about what happened to Davey? Yeah, we do, Benny. When they gave the green flag for the restart, Davey radio just through. He thought he had a flat tire. Apparently, he had some rubber build up on that radial tire, and the car got real loosely back down to the gas, but now the car should be okay. In fact, Mark Martin radioed the same thing to his Jack Roush team. He thought he had a flat. So apparently, both those guys backed out a little bit, and that was a break for Ernie Irvin. And Mark Martin is back on the gas because he's pulled alongside Ernie Irvin in the battle for second position, and Mark gets it as they come off the fourth turn and onto the trioval. Mark the second, Irvin third. Kowicki is the leader of the race. Look at Mark Martin pull away from Ernie about two car lengths in that corner. Yeah, he didn't have much problem passing him, and once he did pass him, he was starting to drive away a little bit. Of course, Alan Kowicki's got himself a pretty good lead out there at the moment, but look at Richard Petty coming up through the pack. He has had some fine performances at this racetrack in his late career. And he is turning in a good performance here in the first 15 laps of this event. He's able to run right on the bottom of the racetrack. And he is up to 13th position, Jerry. Bobby Loomis told me, the crew chief, that you got to watch us on Sunday. He said we have a brand new race car for Michigan. And on top of the new race car, our engine man, Bob Ripple, who they've nicknamed Mr. Torque, has put one dynamite motor. So we're going to be a factor if we can stay out there all afternoon. Well, wouldn't it be interesting if he gets his 201st win at the track that he started his 1,000th race, Michigan International? We're too high for that, Bob. Why? Well, I think the, grand, the people's going to tear the grandstands down. <laughs> we're sitting up on top of them, yeah. so we're in big trouble if he wins this race. <laughs> we'll have to jump off the back. <laughs> he was running well. He is. Petty and Rod there, 13th and 14th. Rick Mast is coming up on Terry Labonte. Mast working the low group. And ahead of Petty is Kyle and Hutt. They're side by side. And right ahead of him, the defending champion, Dale Jarrett, who was driving the car that's right beside him that's being driven this year by Morgan Shepard, or at least the same team. 
I wouldn't be surprised if it isn't the same car, Bob. It could be. I don't yeah. know if they crashed that car anytime after that or not, but it's watching up a little bit in the turns. And Jarrett looks like it's the med drive, and this time coming off the turn and makes the pass. Great in car shot from Morgan Shepard, and we go down to Jerry Punch once again. Just to answer your question about that 21 car, I asked Eddie Wood, is this the same car that Dale Jarrett won with last year? He said, no, as a matter of fact, that car was destroyed in the Winston when Dale Jarrett spun at Morgan Tagg. He said, so <laughs> Dale took care of that car for us. For Ned, Ned, you won't ask the question anymore, will you? No. <laughs> Hot Strickland, car number 12. Kyle Petty as we move our camera through the field and catch up with the leader. It looks now, like Mark Martin's also catching up with the leader. Yeah, he is. He's within three, four car lengths now. Another good in-car shot from Mark Martin as we watch his pursuit of the leader, Alan Kowicki, completing lap number 19. Is this a roof cam? This is the camera on top of the roof. I think it's... And here is a battle right behind him between Daryl Waltrip and Ken Schrader. A couple of Chevys going at it. You know, Darrell Walter had a great run here in June, finished second mm -hmm. to Davey Allison. Had a good qualifying run here for the champion Spark Plug 400, qualified in ninth position. And John Kernan has a comment on Darrell Waltrip. Guys, you want to talk confidence. I don't think there was a more confident team than Darrell Waltrip's uh, West Bernardo Chevrolet crew this whole weekend. Talking with them this morning, they said they only ran 12 laps under speed during practice and qualifying this whole weekend. They said they hadn't changed a thing from their second place run back in June. They Daryl's plan, simple, just as usual. Hang in there, hang in there. Last hundred miles, that's when he's going to try and make his move toward the front. He's in eighth position right now. About a half a straightaway behind the leader in pursuit of Ken Schrader. At this racetrack, as long as you can see the leaders, you know, when you come off the second corner and look towards turn three, as long as you can see the leaders, you have confidence you can win the race. When they get out of sight, you feel like you're going to lose, and normally you are. Davey Allison and Bill Elliott are wheel to wheel for fourth position. They can drop back to seventh on the restart, but has gradually worked his way back up, trying to take over fourth. We haven't even heard Davey mention relief driver so far since we've been here, but Jim Sauter is the selected driver if uh, Davey would have to relinquish the car to someone else, but he is in fifth position at the moment. Up front, it is still Kowicki, and now the interval between himself and Mark Martin is less than two car lengths. And a car going very slowly down the back stretch is Jimmy Horton. He blew down in one and two, Bob. I saw him just a moment ago. Smoke, and uh, he's down on the inside of the racetrack. It looks like that um, it's over for the day. And looky here comes Mark Martin right on the back bumper now of this Hooters Ford. Back stretch is 2,242 feet long, and it's five degrees of banking. And that's where Martin is pursuing Kowicki at this moment. Now into the 18-degree banking of turn number three. Mark Martin's car started to push a little bit. He had to get out of the gas to make it turn. Now in front of this sold-out grandstand. They sold out of tickets last week for this event, and anybody that came today had to take an infield spot, and that is, for the most part, filled. 23 laps have been completed here at Michigan International. Kowicki, Martin, Urban, Elliott, and Davey Ellison in the top five. 6 through 10, Marlon, Walter, Schrader, Jarrett, and Shepard. ESPN's annual visit to Michigan International Speedway near Brooklyn for the Champions Park Plug 400. And a great battle up front as Mark Mountain. Martin mounted a challenge against Alan Kowicki there, but he could not pull off the pass, and so Kowicki maintained the lead. He got a nose under him, Bob, but he just couldn't, couldn't make it work. Another Napa field summary for you. This is how the field was running last lap. ESPN signal is being carried internationally today, and we'd like to welcome everyone watching on Sky Sport in the United Kingdom. Sky, Sky Sports, we should say. And we welcome you to our coverage. Hope you enjoy NASCAR Winston Cup racing, watching us from the United Kingdom. When you say United Kingdom, where is that England or is that the world? Or That's what? the whole big thing over there in England. Oh, I understand. <laughs> I understand that Benny Parsons is very popular. Yes. 
In fact, they've even asked for an autograph session. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and a, and a big meal. Does yeah. that sound more attractive? I could go have tea and crumpets and queens, no problem. What's a crumpet? I don't know. I've heard of them, though. And if it's something to eat, believe me, I'll try it. Now the first four begin to close in on each other. Ernie Urban in third and Davey Allison in... Uh, Bill Elliott. Bill Elliott, I should say, in the position have closed in on Martin and Cody. They indeed have. I think now is the time, Bob, when when you can tell how the cars are handled. They've run 27 laps. They're working the 28th lap right now, and about more than 20 of those have been under the green flag. And uh, the tires are really heated up. This is when you can tell whether a car is really working or not. And we see some out there that are not. I mean, not that these up front here. They seem to be doing okay. But uh, there are a few of them, maybe like Dale Earnhardt. He's not uh, doing too well. He started way back in the back, and he's still way 26. back in the back. Yeah, he started 41st, and he's 26. He's been in the pits a couple of times. Again, he was relegated to the back of the pack because in second round qualifying yesterday, although he was the quickest, his speed was disallowed because the car was too low. It failed post-qualifying technical inspection, and so he went to the rear of the field. But there's one car that's moving along pretty well, Bob, and that is the, as we see Earnhardt going very high, Kyle Petty and the mellow yellow Pontiac is coming up through the field. Watch it go under Ken Schrader. Schrader was passed by Darrell Walter a few laps ago, and now Kyle just drives down under him and drives right on by. He picks up eighth position. Kyle's car is working wonderfully on the low side of the racetrack. All these other guys going to the corner and pushing up or going to the top of the racetrack, he's able to run on the bottom of the racetrack, which obviously is a short way around. Watch as he goes low and Schrader way up on the top of the racetrack. Yep, now Dale Jarrett gets under, under Schrader as well. Now while they run side by side, Kyle Benny will probably pull away from him. So Dale Jarrett looking for a ninth spot here, pulling alongside Ken Schrader at the end of the back stretch. If he can make the thing stick on the bottom of the racetrack like Kyle Petty did. Not nearly as well as Kyle did. Kyle just, just was able to get on the gas full throttle coming off of that turn and just drove right on by straight. Now he moves ahead of him slightly at the line. But he knows how to do that part. He sure he learned that <laughs> lesson last year. <laughs> They're wheel to wheel, Bob. Yeah, they are. Remember last year when that last lap was wheel to wheel rubbing? And <laughs> you got excited, didn't you? Oh, not very, no. Well, they touch, I don't know what I said. Well, they're costing the most of themselves some time by running side by side here. They just, of course, they're, they're racers. That's what they're doing. They're racing. But uh, they are losing some time by doing it. Yeah. And they all drove in a little hard that time and made it stick and made the pass stick. They all moves tonight. Ken Schrader, 10. You can see that a shot of the white right window that's in the car. We saw it in Kawiki's car at the top of the show. The first race that they've had to run the, the uh, window in the right side of the race cars here at Michigan International Speedway. We talked about Dale Earnhardt and the fact that he isn't moving up very quickly. Jerry, what's the status? He has been slowing the last couple laps. We'll check in with Kurt Shelburne. Kurt, what's the problem with the car? Dale thinks he might have a flat, Jerry. He's not exactly sure which one... Uh, Probably a left side, you know, if you can't tell exactly which end of the car it is, but uh, we may have a slow leak or we're trying to leak. Car very unstable, Dale complaining of he's having to basically battle a bucking Bronco out there. He'll try to hold on for another eight or ten laps to their first scheduled pitch stop. Right? Now Dale moves up on the racetrack alongside Jimmy Hitsley. Yeah, he's not tiptoeing with that No, thing. he isn't. He, he feels pretty, pretty comfortable with it. Driving it in up on the outside. Stanley Smith just ahead of Dale. Of course, the King just ahead of Stanley. Richard backed up a little bit from where he was. He really had made a good charge up towards the front, but he dropped back a little bit now. Bob. Yeah, he's back in 23rd. Phillips 66 in car camera, and Jimmy Hensley's right in the middle of the pack that's been running together for several laps. They have. This is the kind of racing that we used to see here at Michigan for the league. You see 8, 10, 12 cars up there dicing it up. But this is uh, back from what, about 12 through 20th? Ooh, man. Earnhardt went through that crowd pretty good. He sure did. That's Lake Speed there at the back of the pack in the middle alongside uh, and a forward. Yeah, Jimmy Hensley and Purvis. 
Chad Little driving the nine car right in front of that's uh, Lake Speed in front of Hensley. There's the nine car that you're seeing now. Of Chad Little. Man, what a mess car. That's the kind of a situation you can see an accident, so hope we, hope we don't. But yeah. when they start jockeying around that much with the tires hot, sometimes the car can slip just a little bit. Earnhardt slips up to the outside. Stanley Smith goes to the inside. And Bobby Hillen. Ten cars battling there, and Mark Martin continues to try to grab the lead away from Alan Kowicki, but he has not done it yet. So that's how they're running up front. Let's go back here and watch this uh, scramble for position. Ten cars battling here. We talked about the United Kingdom. There's uh, the car owned uh, by Team Ireland, Bobby Hillen, at number 31. And just passing him was the car number 68 of Bobby Hamilton, who is running a board here also for the first time. And he spun earlier, but he's working his way back up through there. And John Kernan is down uh, in King Richard Petty's pit. And as we mentioned, the King is falling back. He's now 29th. John? Well, Bob, a slight handling problem for Richard Petty. Just talked with Robbie Lemons, the crew chief on that car. He says that the car has picked up a push, and so they're just going to have to ride it out and get a, a the next pit stop on the first round of pit stops. They're going to have to try and make some chassis adjustments to try and loosen that car up just a little bit. In practice yesterday, I heard more drivers, and I watched a lot of them coming into the garage area. There were more of them complaining about the cars pushing than ever before. Normally on this racetrack, you, you, talk, you hear them talk about the car being loose, but the... The back end is really sticking on them. Then I don't know if it has anything to do with the skirts they're running here and, of course, the windows. I don't know if that has tightened the cars up, but uh, that is one complaint they have. There's so many. When you put that side window in and you lean that car against all that area, certainly you're going to help the car from getting loose. And, yeah, these guys really don't know what they have right now. But I know one thing they've got is a lot of speed. Now, for the fans who wonder what we're talking about, Benny mentioned at the top of the show that they're running the windows, side windows, for the first time here at Michigan. Now, they've been running those at Daytona and Talladega, but the speeds have picked up enough here at Michigan now that they're running the window. You can see it there on the right side. And also, they have a little skirts on the bottom of the car to, in case it gets sideways to keep it from picking up and uh, spinning the wrong way. Maybe Allison's crash with Pocono, I think, was the thing that uh, mandated that, and they just felt that on tracks that uh, do have a lot of speed besides Daytona and Talladega, these skirts and side windows keep the cars on the track a lot more. They have a tendency not to fly when uh, they spin and get air under them. So it's Alan Kowicki leading Mark Martin with 37 of 200 laps completed. ESPN live coverage of the Champion Spark Plug 400 and we're going to commercial, but we won't because there was action on the racetrack and Mark Martin touched with Kowicki off of turn number four, but Mark got the lead. <laughs> Came off the corner and did a slide job like they talked about on Saturday Night Thunder. The only problem was Kowicki was still there as Martin was sliding up the racetrack. They came off turn four and bump. Here it is again. Here we see Martin on the inside. Now he's got a good head of steam up. He thinks he's going to clear Kowicki because he's on the get. Uh oh, he got the car a little sideways, had to go up. We see Kowicki's car also wiggle. Close call for both those cars. Well, we didn't want you to miss that pass, so now that Mark has taken the lead and things have settled down just a little bit, we will take another break and be back with more live coverage from Michigan. Mark Martin leads Kowicki, Irvin, Elliott, and Allison. Speedway, first in a series of pit stops. On pit road, Ricky Run, tied Chevrolet. They changed right side tires. Now left side tires, he is down and away. Actually, guys, he pitted about five left early than most of the leaders will pit because he had a handling problem. The car was very, very loose. Well, he was losing a lot of time on the racetrack, but we'll see that tied Chevrolet pick up a lot once he gets back out there with those four fresh tires on him. Pit stop came on lap number 41. With Ricky Rudd picks up momentum heading down the back stretch. We'll see others start coming in. We predicted about uh, lap 45 or so, but we see Dale Jarrett and Ken Schrader slowing down to come into the pits. So they're coming in a little bit earlier than we, we thought. Ninth and tenth place runners are on pit road. Dale Jarrett and Ken Schrader. The 23 car of Eddie Bierschwale also making a pit stop. Slowly down pit road, and Jerry Punch is there to call these two stops. And a pair of Chevrolets, Pinnick nose to tail, Kenny Trader's Kodiak crew, changing right side tires. 
making a major chassis adjustment in the trader car. Likewise, they are going to adjust the chassis there in Dale Jarrett's car. You see Kenny Schrader's crew down the have right side tires. Only two tire change for Schrader. He's away, but Dale Jarrett will get all four tires on the Interstate Battery Chevrolet. Likewise, they have made a chassis adjustment on his car. He is down. He smoked the tires, and he's away. He let him up coming out of there. Speed limit, by the way, on pit road is 65 miles an hour. Man, that's pretty strange. Shredder changing right sides, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I, I was a little surprised that he only took on the right side. Hutt Strickland is in, so is Terry Labonte coming in. Let's see how it works out out on the racetrack. Just changing two tires for Shredder. Three flag pit stops being made here. Lap 43, Terry Labonte is coming in. Davey Allison also is on pit road. Go to Jerry Punch. First scheduled stop for the Haviland Ford Thunderbird. Davy Allison brings the car very deliberately down pit road. Remember the speed is just 65 miles an hour. Davy will bring the car to a halt and the Robert Yates crew, Larry McReynolds, Ryan Timbers, and the rest will go to work changing right side tires. Looks like they are going to change only two right side tires because track position is very important here. Right side tires going in. It is full of fuel. Allison is away in 12 seconds flat. Good pit stop for the Haviland Texaco Ford driven by Davey Allison. And now Mark Martin, the leader of the race, comes in. Sterling Marlin's right behind him, also Kyle Petty. So, and how many tires do you think he's going to change? Is he only going to change two or four? I don't know. I would guess that Mark Martin will change four, but we'll see. He stops. Don't Looks like, up. No, don't look like they're going to the left side to loosen the lugs. Jerry Punch. Looks to be only a two-tire stop as well for the Babylon crew, Dad. Betty, Steve Bell with the crew now. We have a crash in turn one. Crash in turn one. Don't know who it is, but he is sliding all over the place and banging into the wall. Looks like it's Stan Fox. Stan, if you saw Saturday Night Thunder last night, and I hope you did, had a frightening accident in a USAC midget at Indianapolis Raceway Park. The car got up on the wall and turned over, came down hard on a roll cage. Stan trying to commute between here and Indianapolis Raceway Park the last couple of days, and now his Winston Cup car has crashed here at Michigan. Now here was the race to the line as the caution came out. Kowicki and Bill Elliott. And Bill wanted to get those five bonus points for leading a lap. Thought this might be one of his better opportunities. A break for these drivers. Let's see which one is going to get to the mm. line first. They touched there for a little bit. Wow. Who was it? <laughs> uh, looks like Elliott. That was close. Yes, it was. Here's the line. No, oh, yeah, I, I think it's Kowicki. I don't know who it is. <laughs> yep. Too close to call. Does that come under too close to call? I think so. And, yeah, and guys, let the NASCAR officials figure that. What a break for those drivers. I know Stanley Smith doesn't want this uh, publicity, but while we were watching this and the replay, he spun coming off turn four. Is that right? Yeah. Hmm. There he, he is in the pit area. And he made a 360 and came right on down pit road. Here it is. There yep. he goes around and around. Stops that baby. Puts her in gear and goes to the pits. He aimed to do that, Benny. Come on. That's See a strange it. entry to pit road, I'll tell you. <laughs> well, but it created some excitement for the fans. <laughs> Stanley well, Smith on pit road, still working on the left side of the car. Good but, break for those who had not made pit stop. Bad break for those who had made pit stops. And uh, some of them were lapped down. And the pace car has not yet picked up the field. So pit road is closed, except for those under emergency circumstances very busy under this second caution of the day because of an accident up in turn number one involving Stan Fox. Alan Kowicki is in, so is Bill Elliott. Alan on the top and Bill on the bottom as their pit crews work and changing tires on the left side of Elliott and he's off. Now still working on the left side of Kowicki's car. Now he begins to pull away. And he's pitted toward turn number one at the end of pit road. The wicket got out first. Good pit stop by the Hooters crew. Bernie Irvin, meanwhile, had a pretty slow stop. He must have made a chassis adjustment or something because he went in running about third. It looks like he's going to come out running about fifth or sixth. I can also tell you that Richard Petty got his lap back under that caution. He had just gone a lap down but got back around the leaders and now is in 21st position, and there are 23 on the lead lap. 
So we're under caution for the second time this afternoon as pit stops being made. And at 8 o'clock tonight, join us for ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. This week from the south side of Chicago as the Yankees go up against the White Sox from Comiskey Park. Roberto Kelly leads the Yankees against the power of Frank Thomas. John Miller, Joe Morgan with all the action at 8 o'clock tonight. Exclusive coverage on ESPN Sunday Night Baseball. 8 o'clock tonight. Under caution here at Michigan. We'll take another break and be back with more of our live coverage of the Champions Park Vlog 400, race number 19 of the season. Field from the Pontiac Pace Car under caution, and once again, today's race includes the Gillette Halfway Challenge Contest. $10,000 to the driver leading at the halfway point, and a lucky fan at home could win a new Chevrolet Lumina Z34. If you have entered the contest for this race and your entry is selected and you are called at home, you must name the driver who won the Gillette Halfway Challenge to win the Chevy. Now, if you want to enter our next contest, which will be for the Bud 500 at Bristol, we must have your entry by the 28th. Write to Gillette Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33731-2246. You must be 18 years of age or older, and you must we must receive your entry by Friday the 28th to be eligible for the Gillette Halfway Challenge during the Bud 500 at Bristol International Raceway on Saturday night, the 29th. Ricky Rudd has been in the pits again, now pulling out. Will he? The car number 12 of Hunt Strickland, the car number 18 of Dale Jarrett, and the car number 25 of Ken Schrader had all made green flag pit stops, and they are a lap down. Schrader is, is at the tail end of the lead lap. He's riding between the leader, Alan Kowicki, and the pace car, but he only took on two tires. Now, we saw Mark Martin and Davey Allison make pit stops as well, but they only changed two tires. They were far enough up that they got back out, stayed in the lead lap, so when the caution came out, they were still in the lead lap. They Both of them have been back in since to take on left side tires. Watch for your favorite driver as we once again show you the Napa Field Summary where they were running last time around. Earnhardt, as you can see, up to 13th now. Richard Petty is 18. Showing 22 cars in the lead lap. Say, say Strader is almost a lap down. And most of these guys are the victims of making a pit stop yeah. and the cost of flight coming out just a couple of laps later. That's Jeff McClure in car number 27. Stan Fox just crashed up in turn number one. That's why we're under caution. The car number 27, the race for life car. Bob, uh, they're running. Jeff McClure is, is running a sign for two young boys down in Morgan, in North Carolina. Leon and Danny Crump, who have a rare disease, adrenal leukodystrophy, and they're going to, to make one of those uh, collector's cars from, from this car, and it'll be on sale to raise funds for those two young boys. That's great. There's been a lot of people trying to raise money for those boys for a couple of years now, Ned. Danny Crump, their dad, has been involved in racing, worked for Travis Carter, Quite a bit. There's, there is the car, the race for life, Jeff McClure. As strange as it may seem, the disease that these two boys have, there are no government programs to for these kids. And it, it costs to, to keep them alive. I mean, they're fine, except they just need a shot or medicine. And it's, uh, what, fifty dollars or $100,000 a year to do that. Well, it is. And now the, uh, Leon needs a bone transplant. It is. So, so they're waiting for, for a matchup. Okay, we're ready to go green. Indeed we are. The pace car has pulled into the pit area and the green flag flies. We go back to racing on lap number 53. Alan Kowicki is the leader of the race. Those cars in front of him are now getting back on the lead lap or making up a lap. Yes, they are. Kowicki is starting oh, to go way high. Well, that gave those four cars there the opportunity they wanted that they could get a caution. But Kowicki, something definitely is wrong, whether he has a flat or what, we don't know. Car went straight up the banking, and Allen lost several positions. Here comes Ernie Irvin. Look at the tight competition here for Mark Martin's boot camp. Ooh, Martin slides right up in front of Michael Waltrip's Penzo Pontiac. <laughs> now, Bill Elliott leads the race, so yeah, he, he has a, the five bonus points that you get for leading the lap. I think that's one reason for Wiki was trying to keep Elliott behind him so hard the other time was trying to keep him from getting those bonus points. Boy, something's wrong with Kowicki because he once again slides up the banking and loses his spot. Here's how it was when the green flag came out and they 
began to accelerate into turn number one. And look at Kowicki. He just went straight up the hill. I thought he was going to hit the wall for a second. I'm sure he must have thought he had a flat tire or a tire. Maybe just the car didn't feel right to him as he went into that turn. Now, Bill Elliott has passed all of those cars that shot out there in front of him and has put him a lap down. Jerry, what do you know about the Kowicki situation? I just spoke to Danny Glad a minute ago, Dad. He said that Alvin hasn't said it's loose or it's tight. He just said it's, it's the tires aren't exactly what I wanted. He said, I'll get it sorted out. Give me a lap or two. So the car just split up across the racetrack when it took the restart. Give me a couple laps to get the car sorted out, and I'll move back toward the front. Right now, he said, it's not what I wanted. These tires don't feel good to me at all. Well, Benny, a lot of times during caution periods, it's much warmer here today. Let's, let's qualify that than, than it has been on Friday when they qualified and yesterday in the practice run and on, on the caution laps many times your tires will pick up some rubber that's in the turns and then when you go into that turn the first time you don't have full traction of the tire down on the pavement and it'll give you a weird thing that's right sometimes when that build up on the tire you only have about 10 percent of the thread on the racetrack Kawiki has fallen back to eighth position and it's probably about 10 degrees warmer than, although it isn't warm here by any means temperature in the mid 70s but it's in the mid 60s when they qualified on friday that was another reason for the high speed. Now there's the second and third place cars of Brett Bodine and Ernie Irvin as Bill Elliott leads this race. Irvin heads up the banking to challenge Brett Bodine to the Quaker State Board. Brett holds him off for the moment. Waltrip is right behind, so is Sterling Marlin, Bill Elliott, and Rusty Wallace. Well, Schroeder must have had, had his hands full out there. With, he just changed two tires when he made his pit stop and did not stop under that car in the Wallace there at the tail end of that pack is not on the lead lap. Rusty shown in 25th. He's one of those drivers that have made a pit stop. Oh, caught. there's Ricky Rudd. Ricky Rudd is in the wall, and Flames are trailing behind the car. We're going to bring out our third caution of the day. Looks like some pretty heavy contact on the right side of that car. He probably knocked an oil line off, or maybe the fuel pump off the car, and that's the uh, fire that we see. And the fire truck immediately up to the end of the tide Chevrolet. No drivers got in a lap back. As Bill Elliott led everybody back to the line. And uh, Doyle Ford and assistants trying to get the field slowed down because the fire crew did arrive on the scene. And well, Rudd climbs out of the thing. It's like wobbly, but he's yep. it's like he's okay. Looking back at the car. Of course, uh, Ricky Rudd won the IROC championship yesterday here at Michigan International, finishing in second position to Allenzer Jr. Ricky picked up $175,000 for being the 1992 IROC champion, but today's Winston Cup race ends with the number five tied Chevrolet against the wall. You're watching the champion Spark Plug 400 from Michigan. Spark Plug 400 from Michigan International Speedway, part of ESPN Speed World coverage. Ricky Rudd's car has made contact with the first turn wall. He is out of it and apparently okay. Rudd just made a pit stop not too long ago. Here's Jerry. And while he was in the pits, guys, they were working beneath the front of the car. And what they were doing was removing this pan from beneath the front air dam area. This, what happened was apparently Rudd was complaining of the car being so loose because so much air was being caught by this pan in the front air dam. So what they have done is taken this pan out to hopefully let the front end not be quite so tight and tighten up the rear of the car. But apparently it didn't work because Ricky Rudd had a short afternoon. They have gone back to the garage here to try to repair the car, but this aluminum pan here probably had very little, if anything, to do with that incident over in the turn. Gentlemen? The car still sitting there. There was some fire that was quickly extinguished. You can see the powder that they uh, used to put out the fire there beneath the car. And now their chore is to get it up on the hook get it back to the garage area. We're at Michigan International Speedway for NASCAR Winston Cup Racing. In International Speedway, you're looking at Mark Martin under caution, running in uh, sixth position. And uh, Ned, let's see if we can talk to him on the radio. Mark, this is Ned Jarrett, the ESPN Uribus. Hey, Ned. How's it going out there? Well, it was going pretty good. It was going better until that uh, yellow came out. Uh, we got a little bit behind. It's going to take a while to move back up. We've got a real fast car uh, through the corners, but it's uh, pretty hard to pass out here for me right now. 
when you made that pass on Alan Kowicki for the lead, it got a little bit hairy there. Well, I had to get, I had to take it when I had a shot. Uh, Alan was going to be real hard to pass. I had a run at him going there, and uh, he saw me coming and kind of uh, gave me enough room. The Valvoline car strong. I wanted to lead the race when I could. We had a real quick car through the corners, but uh, I had to kind of squeeze him a little bit to get by. All right, go get him. Mark Martin is certainly a driver who is on a hot streak. He's had six top ten finishes in the last seven races. He started this race from second position, and uh, they hit the rev limiter during qualifying, or he may have even uh, sat on the pole. So. Because he didn't miss the pole but about one thousandth of a second. And those, there's no way we can measure one thousandth. That ain't very much, is it? No. <laughs> We understand that Ricky Rudd walked into the infield hospital. He will be checked there, but preliminary indication he's okay after a crash in turn one. Urban, Brett Bodine, Daryl Waldrop, and Sterling Marlin are running first through fifth after 61 of 200 laps in the Champion Spark Plug 400, live from Michigan International Speedway. Our Speed World coverage being brought to you by Buick and your local Buick dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. By Napa, because there are no unimportant parts. And by Bush Beer, smooth Bush Beer and easy drinking Bush Light. Well, the field is forming now for a restart with the lap cars to the inside and those on the lead lap at the outside. Many came in to top off their tanks here in the last couple of laps. This caution has been for Ricky Rudd's crash in turn number one, and we'll go back to green on lap number 64. And Ernie Irvin was one of those that came in to top off his tank top, and boy, I'll tell you, that's a long way to go up through the pack. Jerry, why did he come in? Yeah, there were two reasons, actually. One, the car was a little bit loose. They wanted to put about a round of wedge in it, but they're thinking way, way ahead. They told Ernie, he said, if you come in right now, we top it off, we can make it the rest of the way on two pit stops. Mm, strategy being played out already on pit road. Man, we're at 62 laps. We're worried about the end of the race already. We're not even that close to the halfway point. We're worried about the end of the race already. Boy, I tell you, give up that track position. It could be tough, but who knows? It might work out. I haven't even finished my cup of coffee. They're worried about winning the race. <laughs> Get that sandwich finished, and uh, you'll be set for a few laps, huh? Yep. Here's Elliott leading him down, retaking the green flag, and back to full speed racing. Red Bodine is second, followed by Walter, Urban, and Marlon. The 12 car got a great run off the second corner, trying to get by Elliott. Get back in the lead lap. That's Hut Strickland in his Ford. The Rebestus Ford. I've been calling the Buick all year when he's been a Chevrolet. I don't know what I'll do now. <laughs> Ahead. Boy, Hutt really went to the bottom of the racetrack. He was on the white line here at the start finish line. And look at this three abreast into turn one. These cars are really, really zinging through these corners. And Hutt just can't get that lap back from Elliott. He can't get off the corner with the momentum that he needs to get by it. Now he pulls in behind Bill. cars are lap down. And uh, Earnhardt and uh, Irvin are side by side with lots of traffic ahead of them, including Bobby Hamilton and Morgan Shepard. <laughs> they all, how come they come off that corner and they all just go boom and want to hit each other? But look at all this traffic directed in front of them. Man, oh man. They're just going to try it three abreast. And look how far they are from the leader. Elliott's going in three. Ernie's coming off two. And Ernie's still got to pass all these cars. And Elliott's opened up quite a healthy lead at the moment over Brett Bodine. The field goes through, and then we zoom into this huge pack of cars. Three, five, six, seven, ten cars running right together. Look at this. And Earnhardt and Ernie can't go anywhere. Now Bobby Hamilton is going to try to make a move. Ernie decides to come down and follow Earnhardt now. For some reason, all the people here in the grandstand are, not, are standing. I wonder why that. 
Oh, no, no, they see all that action. The car number 27, I believe, of Jeff McClure and Earnhardt came together there for just a little bit. Didn't seem to hurt either one of them too much. Let's take a look at it again. Coming down the front, and we see... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, goodness. Earnhardt just went up on him a little bit. Yep. Ernie was, I mean, Earnhardt was trying to get himself in position to get in the corner to make a real wide entry in the corner. And then, of course, the Jeff McClure was already there. Here comes Ernie Irvin to the low side of Earnhardt and Bobby Hamilton watches from behind. He hooks up with Irvin on the bottom side. He's just looking for a place to go. He don't know which one to follow. Well, he should have followed Irvin because <laughs> Irvin's the one who made the pass, but maybe he couldn't. That's 16th, 17th, and 18th there. Irvin, Earnhardt, and Hamilton. And look at this. Four wide down the back chute. There's Harry Ginn on the inside trying to get by Wally Dallenbach. He makes the pass, and meanwhile, Ernie Irving dives in there. Look, and he dives on the inside again. Gant got a little bit sideways. He jumped up under Morgan Shepard and had to back off for just a moment. And Irvin had his momentum, so he just floorboarded it and came right on through. Well, this is hold your breath time, isn't it? Well, I am. Well, I really am. I'm up here safe, and I'm holding my breath. <laughs> Sadie might not get to attend any more races until 
maybe for the next February in Daytona. Yep. Yeah, Kyle seems to prefer that low line. He comes down the tri-oval here sometimes and is running on a white line at the bottom of the track. But when you get down there, you, you feel a lot of the momentum of the car, but if you get good traction, as he's doing right now, then you can get a good run off the turn and maybe go down the straightaway at a good speed. He pulls away from Davey Allison to see Davey Allison had the momentum up in that groove. He had more RPMs as he came off the turn because they were pull back and run Watching the battle for sixth position, Davey Allison and Kyle Petty. And Kyle once again, half the car length ahead through the corner. Davey battling back on the outside as they head down the back stretch. That's where a spotter comes in so handy that it's familiar with these cars and he can tell Kyle, look, he cleared and move up coming off that second corner so he can get that momentum. Bill Elliott comes down as the leader and completes 74 laps. The top five, Elliott, Brett Bodine, Sterling Marlin, Daryl Waltrip, and Mark Martin. Halfway Challenge, Post Office Box 2246, St. Petersburg, Florida, 33731, 2246. You have to be 18 or older, and we must receive your entry by Friday the 28th to be eligible for the Gillette Halfway Challenge during the Bud 500 at Bristol International Speedway in less than two weeks. Here's the leader, Bill Elliott. Behind him, good battle for second as Brett Bodine and Sterling Marlin are right together. Then comes Walter, Martin, Jarrett. I think these guys are gaining on the leader. Looks like they might be a little bit. Yes, they are gaining a little bit on Darrell Walter is the man that's gaining the most. Yeah, it looks like he's pretty fast. Yeah. Sterling Marlin moving to the top of the racetrack. Gonna we'll try that group a while. It looks like it might work for him. He's got good momentum coming off the corner down the back stretch. He pulls alongside of Brett, and he does take second. You know, there again, the spotter probably told him that Darrell Waltrip is running high. You might try it up there. And he moved up, and uh, away he went. Well, I thought he had second place, but uh, Brett Bodine has another thing about that. in on trying to catch that his teammate, the 11 car. Well, you say teammate, but uh, that's one car that he really would just love to catch and pass. Yeah, that's right. One of the fastest cars on the racetrack, however, is Darrell Waltrip in fourth. Now, we timed lap 72 through 76, comparing Elliott and Waltrip, and you can see on the far right that the interval was 2.6 seconds on lap 72, and Darrell has reduced that to 1.8 a few laps ago on lap 76. Darrell Walter has won the Champions Car Club 400 twice. The last time, 1984. That was uh, eight years ago, so it's about time. Looking from inside Mark Barnes' car at Darrell Walker. Canada. 
Well, Sterling Marlin now is just all over Bill Elliott in the battle for the lead. Let's go to John Kernan. You mentioned their teammates, and yes, Ned Sterling does want to get around that number 11 car. A lot of speculation as to where Sterling's going to be driving and what team he'll be driving for next year. He wants to prove himself. Of course, Bill's going to be the pass. Bill Elliott is passing one of the best. He'd like to pick up his very first win. As far as changing his line to go higher, it wasn't the spotter up top who told him. It was crew chief Mike Bean who is keeping abreast of the situation of various cars on the racetrack and what kind of lines they are running and he told Sterling why don't you move up a little bit higher and see if you like that and apparently it is to their liking he's closed in within the car length and a half or so on Bill and Sterling is still looking for Winston Cup win number one <laughs> and it's unbelievable he has a name Frank Victor Circle has what six or eight or something a lot of and what four poles this year Four pole positions in 1992. As a matter of fact, he's leading the uh, he's a contest that Bush Beer sponsors. Pays about $30,000 at the end of the year. He's leading that. We're about 15 laps from the halfway point, and right now the race has kind of settled down into single file formation, and so we're going to get as many commercial breaks out of the way as possible so we can bring you the pit action and the action on the track when it happens. Around the world around the year with over a million miles of award-winning auto racing coverage. ESPN Speed World today in Brooklyn, Michigan in the Southern Irish Hills for the Champions Park Lug 400 NASCAR Winston Cup race. Well, just when we thought things had settled down and nothing was really going on, we had another caution. It came on lap number 88 and is our fourth of the day. Lake Speed spun on the back stretch. We'll show you that in just a few minutes. Meanwhile, let's catch the live action as they come in for a pit stop. There's Elliott and here's John. Tim Brew and the crew will go to work on a regular four-tire change. They were looking at coming in at about 12 laps from now at about lap 100. Already the work is finished on the right side. They'll bring the jack around to the left side. Bill's got himself a nice cool drink. Looking over Sterling Marlin now the left side just going up on the jack. We talked about these two teammates racing out on the racetrack. Well, Elliott's crew wins the race out of the pit with Sterling Marlin not too far behind. Elliott is moving out, so is Darrell Waltrip. Darrell is going to beat Sterling out of the pits. Here comes Brett Bodine. He's going to fall in right behind Bill, and Alan Kowicki will fall in behind Brett. Those guys, of course, pitted down in turn number one, and so it was easy for them to get into position. Oh, all year long. Oh, look here, boy, look at Lake Speed is the car that spun out, and he, he took the car on around the racetrack, but, boy, he has bigger problems now than he yeah. did when he spun out. This isn't a replay. This is live. Man, oh man, looks like an air line, uh, oil line is blown off or something. Well, this is what happened a few laps ago while we were in commercial break as Lake came off the second corner and the car took off with him toward the inside. He spun. Don't think he hit anything. Now he came on around the racetrack yeah. after that. Didn't look like he hit a thing. Pure X forward. But then when he... I bet you he flat spotted the tires and the tire went flat as he was going around to catch up to the field and the tire came apart and knocked the oil line off the oil cooler and that's where the fire we see. And then this is what happened then when he came around. That's where the oil cooler, oil cooler is, is right there on that left front. Man, I keep talking to you. That's a pretty good flame coming out of there. It's all gone good flame. Why, can you imagine trying to get out of a burning race car as quickly as you can with uh, the shoulder harness and the seat belt and uh, the radio hooked into your helmet. Man. Lake goes around to a lot of churches making speeches and what have you. He is a true believer. He'll have something to tell now. Yes, sir. So you definitely don't wanna, you want to be good because uh, the result is fire. Another uh, reason to wear every available piece of safety equipment because he had gloves on and you could see him throw one off of his hand. Obviously, he got a little hot, and but he would not have the gloves. He may have been in uh, pretty bad shape. So we're under caution now at Michigan for the fourth time this afternoon. Jared, Benny Parsons, John Kern, and Dr. Jerry Punch back in Brooklyn, Michigan for the Champion Spark Plug 400. The leader of the race is Brett Bodine. Now, when we saw it live, I said that he's going to fall in behind Bill Elliott. 
However, that wasn't the case, and Ned is going to take a pin in hand here on our telestrator and show you why Brett is the leader. Okay, here's Elliot. He's already made his pit stop and headed down pit road. Now, here's Brett Bodine. He's pitting down towards turn one. He hasn't come out of the pits yet, and see, right here is the line. If I draw a reasonably straight one, <laughs> that's the line that they're racing to as they come out of the pits. And whoever crosses that line first will be the leader. It was close, but as you will see, Brett... Now disregard that little hump in my line there. <laughs> but you can see Brett does get out there to the uh, the white line first, and as a result, he's the leader. And uh, Alan Kowicki was right there also. Jerry? And actually, that was a 20-second flat pit stop for Brett Bodine. Donnie Richardson and the Clicker State crew got to give a call, but no one was prouder of that pit stop than car owner Kenny Bernstein, who went by and ab absolutely shook every crew member's hand a minute ago on what uh, what went on as far as his pit stop. Less than 20 seconds here in the pits for Brett Bodine. That put him back out up front. This is not the first time this happened with this team, fellas. I've noticed them all year long that they've been making very fast pit stops. I started to comment on that, not even knowing how quick they had made this pit stop before we zeroed in on the late speed car over there burning. As we see Lake's car there right now, it burned wow. quite a bit sure up there on the left front. But the 2016, the Baker State team has really performed in the pits. Kenny Bernstein, of course, himself is trying to win the top fuel championship in NHRA drag racing, but every time he isn't racing and can make a Winston Cup race, he is here. And Blake's... Speaking of Kenny Bernstein, white balance. there's the man. <laughs> white balance. Knows a little about television. Yeah, he it? does. <laughs> What's it say here? The champion Spark Bar is... Ah, they're, they're right looking right. toward that 10 grand, and if they can hold the lead for nine more laps, they'll have it. 91 laps completed here at Michigan International Speedway. Here they come, green flag is out. Fred Bodine is the leader. 93 laps completed, seven to go to the halfway point, and $10,000 to the leader of the event at that time. Once again, the car's on the outside line in the lead lap. Car's on the inside line, a lap down and trying to do something about it, and it looks like Dale Jarrett might be doing something about it with his Chevrolet there. Yeah, he got back in the lead lap there for a moment at least. Rusty Wallace trying to do as the same thing, trying to move on the inside of the 26 car of Brent Bodine, but he hasn't been able to do it yet. Here comes Alan Kowicki. Boy, Brad's car really pushed up as he came off of that turn. And that gave Rusty an opportunity to jump under there but was not able to, to make that pass. Then he had an idea of making three up rest going down in turn one, but common sense prevailed. This is Mark Martin's car. Maybe to the left. Sterling Marlin up ahead. Darrell Walton right in front of Sterling. See, these cars look like they're running about 100 about 40, 50 miles an hour. Folks are running 185, 90 miles an hour. About 160 right now. Ooh. Sterling backed off to get around Huff Strickland. Huff's a little bit loose up there. Now he, Sterling moves down on the inside of Davey Allison as Bill, Bill Elliott takes the lead. Elliott has taken the lead on lap 95. Looks like maybe Kowicki has found out whatever kind of problem he had the last time. Looks like he's a little racy right now. Three abreast. Three abreast back behind him. Tight three abreast. A real tight three abreast. Ernie Irvin on the inside. And a crash coming off the second quarter right behind him. Right behind what we were watching, a crash breaks out. Rick Mast is involved, and several others. This will be the break that Dale Jarrett was looking for. Yeah. Gary Cope was involved. He keeps going, however. Car up against the wall. I cannot tell the number. Looks like that everybody was uh, able to keep going, but Dale Jarrett got a break and is now back on the lead lap. Well, Bob, at the risk of bro boasting about your son, uh, if he'd been anybody else, we would have said it. Before the caution came out, he was he was gaining on the leaders about a tenth to two tenths of a second a lap. So then he made the pit stop, got out first of those that were a lap down, and got the break that he needed here by outrunning the leader back to the line. All right, our fifth caution of the day is out of the NASCAR Winston Cup champion Spark Plug 400. We'll be right back. Perspective, this is why we're under caution for the fifth time. Watch up ahead. And that's Derek Cope spinning. 
little bump there maybe? Well, I think the car in front of him got sideways. I think the car in front of Derek got sideways, and he turned to avoid that car. All right, watch and listen. They might have touched yeah. the 30 car, but he, Michael, he might have had to back off because the car in front of him got loose, and Michael hit him. Well, there were four cars involved. Uh, looks like Hope has the most damage. Everybody else was able to keep going. They were Rick Mask, Jeff McClure, and Jimmy Hensley. And in fact, it didn't take long for them to clean the track back there. No debris or anything, and we are ready to go back to caution. And this will complete lap number 98. We'll be on lap number 99. So just two more to go to the halfway point. Bill Elliott's the man that's in position to get it. Let me just correct that again. We're going off caution, back to green. Oh, is it not going back to caution? Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Rusty Wallace on the You know what I mean. <laughs> okay, Rusty Wallace, yeah, then he's about to say he's trying to get a lap back. Just like the old Jerry did. Rusty is 20th position. Dives off in the corner and gets ahead of Elliott, but Elliott comes back on the outside with that momentum, and here comes Kowicki on the inside of Brad Bodine trying to take that second spot away. One more to go to the halfway point. $10,000 to the leader. We go down to the Derry Cope and Jerry Punch. And Barry Dotson, you've taken the Chevrolet back to the garage area for Derry Cope. What happened? What do you say happened out there? our time probably the best run we've had all year we kept taking advantage of the opportunity to put fuel in to stay in the lead lap that's why we're back there 10th to 12th and i guess on the restart a lap car got up slid up in front of us and we slowed to miss him and got drilled from behind and then uh evidently knocked the oil pump belt off the engine broke right in front of us as he came by so i guess you beat the traffic home <laughs> tough break here for the pure litter team and Barry Dotson. and there is the halfway mark Cross flags being displayed by Doyle Ford. We've completed 100 of 200 laps, and the leader of the race is Bill Elliott. He wins $10,000 in the Gillette Halfway Challenge. Now, if you have entered the contest and are called at home and can correctly identify Bill Elliott as the winner of the Gillette Halfway Challenge, you could win the Chevrolet Luna Z34. I'll let you know before the end of the race who, if anyone, wins. Red Bull down having some problems now all of a sudden. Yeah, it's going back a little bit. The wiki got by. Darrell Wolfman got by down already. Irvin just passed him up in the Kodak Chevrolet, so. And, uh, I don't know if it's Bobby Hill on the inside, I think. Bobby has the Team Ireland car number 31. It's black, some of their own hearts. In fact, it is an old front hearts car, a little bit. But this particular one might not be, but but Martin Moraine, who owns that team, did buy his first car from Richard Kilburn. Still for the okay. Now you see Kowicki in second, Daryl Walter third, then Ernie Irvin fourth in number four. Well, he got way up high on that corner. He's using every bit of the racetrack as he comes up off that corner. By the way, Bill is the winningest active driver here at Michigan with seven victories now. David Pearson and Cale Yarborough have more wins here at this facility than Bill. Of course, they're retired, and Bill's seven wins tops the mark among the actives. Ernie Irvin got up under Darrell Walter in that turn, but Darrell had the momentum coming off, so he pulled back out in front of Ernie. Before Mark Martin got in turn one, evidently someone got his way, but he was way up in the debris and hadn't slowed dramatically. There he is. He's backed up to Michael Walter and Bobby Hillen. Bud Strickland, Morgan Shepard, Richard Pay, those guys, he lost 15, 20 car lengths. He had to jump out of the front to save the car. He saw the nose of Harry Gant's car up there for just a moment. Hadn't seen or heard much of him, but he's still out there in the in the lead lap. Back he's being jumped right now in the 13th position. Just a look out Morgan Shepard's windshield to the team mile of the car, Bobby Hillen. That's that Strickland down on the inside there for just a moment. There's the race for second. Uh, Carlin Marlin, once again, he's got, where did he come from? Well, he just passed Ernie Urban, coming up there now, trying to take Walker, who is running third. Well, he has come on strong here in the last couple of laps. See, oh, yeah, he sure 
lost something there. He didn't have momentum enough to do that. Move down to the inside. He's going to lose everything that he gained. And John Kernan is in Sterling's pit. Talking with Mike Beam, he said yesterday they weren't satisfied with the way the engine in the car, the race motor, was running. So they pulled that out and put the qualifying motor back into it. Well, the only problem with that is there was a spot on one of the cylinder walls. Well, Junior talked to Mike about that. Said, do you think we're going to have a problem? How many miles you got on that motor? Mike said, oh, about 100 miles, maybe. He said, well, it's a short race on Sunday. That thing, that motor can't go a total of 500 miles before it blows, then it's probably a bad motor. But they're banking on that nothing's going to happen to that motor. Looking good right now, just past the halfway point. Bill Elliott seems to lead that he has built up there now. Now the Western Auto Race recap as Bill Elliott has led 41 of the one first 100 laps. Five caution periods for 26 laps. 18 cars are on the lead lap, and we have had four leaders and five changes, and the speed is well below the record at 125 miles an hour because of the five cautions. Four drivers have led, Kowicki, the pole sitter, Mark Martin, Brett Bodine, and the current leader, Bill Elliott. Those that have dropped out of competition, several for crashes. Greg Sachs was involved in the crash, as was Jeff Bodine. Jimmy Means, Horton Potter, Stan Fox crashed, Ricky Rudd crashed, and Lake Speed crashed and had a fire. Now, the mechanic of the year standings from Western Auto, showing that Donnie Richardson from Brett Bodine's team is on top by six points over Tony Glover, Tim Brewer's third, and Larry McReynolds and Steve Peel tied for fourth position in the Western Auto Mechanic of the Year standings. This is Sterling Marlin trying to find his way back. He was by these cars a couple of laps ago, but he slid back behind Walker now. This is in fourth spot, fifth spot. Allison is sixth, then Bodine, Kyle Petty. right now the Budweiser board looking for win number eight at Michigan International Speedway you're watching live coverage of the champion spark plug 400 and we'll be back after this Elliot Alan Kowicki and Ernie Irvin the top three at Michigan and a car going slowly in turn number three and four is Dave Marcus uh, that car developed a problem coming through the trioval uh, he's trying to make it back to pit road and has made it on to pit road. So Dave Marcus's race, it appears, is all over. New sponsor on Dave Marcus car today, Ward's Apparel, Metropolitan Road. Those that he's the largest Levi Apparel in dealer in Indiana or Michigan or some state. <laughs> <laughs> Big one, huh? Yeah, oh, Kowicki going for the lead here, going to the low side oh, on Bill Elliott. Ernie Urban watching from third place. Now Urban, look at him cut that thing left and try to pull under for Wicky coming off the turn. Urban is really quick right now. They made some adjustments on that car. Got him much quicker than he was earlier in the race. Ernie Urban moving to the inside and taking second place from Kowicki or trying to. Not so quick, said Allen. Yeah, but watch him come off of that turn. Irvin's getting the bike down on the inside. And, well, still got some stuff to do. The battle still rages. As we watch this battle for second position between Ernie Irvin and Alan Kowicki, we'd like to say hi to a couple of people who are on our regular ESP and auto racing staff that aren't here this weekend. Chevy Berlin back in Indianapolis with a back problem. And Kevin Clark, our regular chief spotter and an incident uh, here at the track earlier in the weekend and went home to Lynchburg, Virginia this morning. So Kevin, we wish you were here and wish you the best in your recuperation. A couple of people on the injured reserve list in the ESPN Auto Racing Group. Ernie still that not I think he's got this. Oh, he slides up front of Alan. Oh, slide off. job. <laughs> Man, that is so close. Got him a run. He said, I'm going to make it stick this time and just slide right up front of him. And he did. Alan's car going pretty high there in the turn. So, just, uh, now Irvin has thoughts of going after Bill Elliott. You know, not too long ago, Elliott had a pretty good lead. But now, 
just ahead. Back in fifth position is Daryl Waltrip, and sixth is Kyle Petty. And Kyle Petty has run this group down. Remember, early in the race, he had a really good race car. It looks like it's coming back to him now. Petty sporting inside that car today. Remembrances of the King Elvis Presley who died 15 years ago on this date. On Petty's dashboard is in loving memory of Elvis. You know, Bob, I'll never forget how I learned. As Ernie Irvin tries to make yep. the pass to believe how I learned about Elvis Presley's death. Yeah. I was at Bobby Isaac's funeral. He was buried oh, on yeah. this day. And uh, Glenn Wood came up and said that he heard it on the radio as he was driving in the Another Napa Field summary for you. Urban still closing in on Elliott here in turn four. Boy, Urban is getting off that turn four. Coming off a little bit low and gets a good bike coming off. 18 cars are on the lead lap. Down through 28, only one lap behind. give a call to Dale's brother-in-law, Jimmy Maycar, who's the crew chief. Maycar, we're now going to lap down, so we're going to loosen the race car up. We'll make the car very loose. So the loose race car, at least to some extent, is a fast race car. So when Dale got his lap back, and the caution came out to that spin over there with Darren Coates, we brought him back down pit road, put a couple rounds of bike back in the car, and tied it back up. So, okay, now we're back in the lead lap. We'll tighten it up. We'll take our time. We'll be patient. We'll work our way for the front. Jerry, we got a great battle for third out there, but don't go away. Uh, I probably won't see you between now and the big day, the 20th of this month. Uh, happy birthday. Are you, uh, what, 45? Is that it? Uh, uh, thank you, Bob. And uh, <laughs> hey, checks in the mail, Bob. No, I'm, I'm not quite your age yet, Bob. <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm at least a couple of handfuls away from that one, but thank you very much for the kind birthday wish. <laughs> Kyle Petty has had a good car today. Look at it worked out on the inside. But Wicky's car is not working as well as he did earlier. Kyle trying to take fourth place away from Kowicki. Allen battling back on the outside, and Waldrop is right behind him. Dale Darrell's been there all day. Yes, he has. Yep. That's his style of race, staying within striking distance until he can see the end of the race and then go anywhere. Remember, he was second to Davey Allison in June. Here he comes down. He's trying to get hooked up with Kyle Petty. Here's Davey Allison trying to get by Brett Bowden. He got by him a few laps ago. Well, maybe Brett's trying to pass Davey again. It looked like the reverse, but Davey was in front of Brett Bowden just a couple laps ago. Whatever it is, they're racing for position, aren't they? And Brett might have him this time. Here's Kyle Petty trying once again to get by Kowicki. Absolutely side by side. Four, fifth, and sixth here. And up front, it's Elliott and Ernie Irvin. Sterling Marlin runs third. Well, I'll tell you, that Mark and McClure really had a good race car the last couple of months, haven't they? Yeah, they sure have. Every race track we've been to, Daytona, road courses. He's won three of the last seven NASCAR Winston Cup races talking about Ernie Urban. There's four, fifth, and six as Kyle passed Kulwicki to go to four. Now the W trying to move down on the inside. Gets a good run off the turn. Winner at Pocono not too long ago, Darrell Walter. That was exceptionally good, yes. Yep. 
there, but Allen backs off. Brett Bodine now gets a good run as Allen backs off. And Over the past few years, we have seen drivers sustain some significant burns to their back and bottom while being in a seat for a long, hot afternoon. And what actually happens is they perspire, and the padding in their seat will become just soaking wet. Now, this seat actually is nothing but a piece of aluminum sheet metal formed to fit the driver and bolted to the floorboard. As the floorboard heats up, so does the seat, so basically a driver can get parboiled in a hot race car on an afternoon. Now, Brett Bodine and Ernie Irvin came up with their own little contraption. It seems to work. We call it Brett and Ernie's ventilated seat. Now, show us how this works, Brett. Certainly, Jerry. We take outside air off the B pillar with a knack of duck through a three-inch hose, run it through a fan to keep the air speed up. Then, as we come around to the back of the seat, we build a dead air space, a half inch off the seat. We formed a about a six by 12 area, half inch deep. This allows the air to slow down. And as it does, we've drilled holes in the back side of the seat, at the driver's back, one inch holes, six of them, and this allows the air to flow through the aluminum seat, keep the seat cool, and also cool the cover and the driver's back. Works very efficiently on those hot afternoons. Very interesting little contraption in talking about hot seats. This was from, uh, oh, not too long ago when Lake Speed's car developed a fire in the engine compartment, and he jumped out probably hoping that he had one of those cool seats. Lake's okay. He's not seriously burned in that incident. Elliot and Ernie Irvin are running up front along with now Kyle Petty. And Dr. Jerry Punch is with the Grand Marshal of today's race, the Rookie of the Year at the Indianapolis 500 this year. Thank you. Indeed, Lynn St. James, Bob, and the owner of 31 world records. And Lynn, first of all, Coming off Indianapolis, what a tremendous month for you. The congratulations on an outstanding effort. Thank you very much. It was great. I had a great time, a great team. I wish it wasn't over. That was the only bad part. You know, it, it has to end to keep on going. Now, you set records at Talladega in a stock car. What about a future in a stock car? Possibly a Winston Cup ride. Well, I mean, I'd love to drive a race car, but great, this is great racing. Any more Indy car rides coming up in the near future? Well, in reality, 1992 is over for me. I'm working on 1993. I want to do a full season. Uh, our sponsors, J.C. Kenny and Agency Redicar, were very happy with the results that we got. So we're working on putting all that together for next year. So I can get a lot of races again before I get to Indy next year. 
Les St. James, the Grand Marshal of the Champions Park Plus 400 here joining us on the back side. We've had a pretty good battle going on up front, guys. It is excellent, Jerry. It is Urban and Elliott closely pursued, making it a three-car race, as a matter of fact. Kyle Petty. Yeah, Kyle just ran him down. He came from back um, in fourth position, uh, past Sterling Marlin, and then ran this duo down as they battled up there. Kyle has a good, fast start. On this side, Jimmy Henson, built 66 car. He's 28, but running right behind the first four. Elliott and Ernie Urban can't seem to decide who's going to lead this race. This is a promoter's dream. <laughs> a Ford, a Chevrolet, and a Pontiac knows the tail. And here comes another Ford. Yep, Sterling Marlin joins the fray. Well, that pit stop's coming up before too long, fellas. So, <laughs> don't know. Don't. Somebody'll have to back off to go into pits. <laughs> don't want to right now, but really and truly trying to determine who's going to lead this thing. Ernie wants to lead. Elliot just is not going to give it away. And then Ernie's going to slap the racetrack. He's got it. Yep. Same way he did uh, Alan Quick. He got a good bike coming off the turn. And, just move right up and, and look who's fifth. Closing in on Sterling Marlin. It's Darrell Walter. There they are. They're all lined up in single file now with Ernie Urban in the lead. Well, those few laps that they were racing side by side allowed those others to catch up. And just before our scheduled pit stops, we'll show you an Apple Field summary. And now they're running last lap. Now here comes Elliott, I mean, uh, Kyle Petty, trying to take second from Bill. What happened is Bill saw that Ernie was running on the bottom of the racetrack and getting through the corners very well. He tried to run the bottom of the racetrack, and his car pushed, and he lost that much position that Kyle Petty was able to take that second spot away simply because Elliott tried a different line. And look at Darrell Walter. If he's trying the low line, it works for him. He goes to fourth. It's, now is when we really tell whose car is handling well. Now, Darrell goes high. Sterling gets back under him, but watch Darrell come off the turn. He'll get good traction coming off of that turn, and he'll beat him down the back stretch. Yep. Kyle Petty has moved that Pontiac in the second spot.
field, so he came in and topped off with fuel probably an extra four or five laps that he would have in his tank. So uh, Dale Jarrett is uh, the leader right now. Now, while we were in break, this is what happened in terms of the pit stops. Ernie Irvin pulling out, racing Bill Elliott to the line. Here comes Jordan Marlin behind him. Ernie just made it to the line before Bill, giving Ernie the advantage there. But as they went into the corner, trying to build up the momentum, look who went by, Davey Allison and Kyle Petty. So Davey and Allison, what? as soon as the 18 car pits, Davey Allison should be the leader. Excepting that Ernie Irvin is under him right now as they come towards the start-finish line. They got a tremendous race going. There they are. Ernie Irvin trying to pass Davey Allison. That would be for, well, Harry Gant is still out there. He's running second. Chad Little is third. So but several when, other cars. Have, yeah, you know, when everybody comes in for the pit stop, as they must within a few laps, this will be the battle up front. Exactly. Dale Jarrett leading the race right now. They'll have to pit before too long. There he is in the Interstate Battery Chevy. Urban, Davey Allison, whose car is up in the gray on the banking. There you can see that Dale Jarrett's pit crew is prepared for the stop. Yeah, he don't want to stay out there and run too long on those old tires. In fact, he's coming in this time around, Bob, because uh, those other cars are running faster laps with those new tires on. If he could run far enough to save the pit stop, it might be worth yeah. a gamble, but evidently he could run that far, so he yeah. chose to come in. Exactly right. 65 miles an hour down to Dr. Jerry Punch, who is positioned in Dale Jarrett's pit. And answering your question, Benny Parsons, the most they could go would be 47 laps, according to Rick Wetzel, who's the engine builder. So what they plan to do right now, according to Jimmy Maycar, is change two right side tires and put a little bit of wedge in the car to try to tighten it up. And change the right side tires by getting it completely full of fuel. Here, Dale rest the engine. 14 and a half seconds, and he is away. Meanwhile, the, those running up front have moved on to turn number two now as Dale gathers up momentum coming out of the pits. Now they're on the back stretch. Ernie Irvin leading Davey Allison, Bill Elliott, Kyle Petty, and Daryl Walter. This is the farthest that Davey's been in a race car in about a month. I don't know. Uh, in that right side window in there. I wonder just how he might be bearing physically in there. We know Millie's not in the best of shape. But... He has done a great job today under all of the circumstances, but the injury has had to take a lot out of him physically, and he's, uh, I don't know what effect it's having. He's still running up there very good and racing very hard. So. Kyle Penny trying to take the spot away from Darrell Walter right behind these guys. Kyle on the inside. The mellow yellow Pontiac. Once again, a reminder that Harry Gant is now the leader of the race, but he will need a stop soon. Chad Little is also out there in second position, but he too will have to get up that spot before too long to make a pit stop. And when that happens, then it will come back to Urban, Allison, Elliott, and Walter. No, Harry Gant. His car gets all the good gas mileage. Might he be able to go to, say, about 50 laps to go? He'd have to run about five more laps. Yeah. And uh, then he could go the rest of the way. Still a lot of question marks and a lot of pit strategy being thought about at this point as 144 out of 200 laps are completed here at Michigan. Seven. Well, Bob, I have a report here that he stopped on lap 96. Okay, we're, he's now working 148th lap, so that means that he has already run 52 laps. If he can go another lap, then he can go the rest of the distance. How about that? Darrell Walter won with gas mileage at Pocono, and uh, maybe he can too. Don't think he'll win the race, though, if it stays green the rest of the way, even making one last pit stop. I think he's too far behind uh, that, that uh, his tires would be so hot and old and the others make pit stops with fresh tires. We'll, we'll see how it works out, but that's my opinion. Well, the, the other guys, when they make that last stop, is only going to be for a, one can of gas or a splash if we should go green flag. So, uh, you're right, we'll just have to wait and see.
Perry in. Here comes Ken in the pits. On lap 149. Well, that's the prediction we had that when he would make his pit stop. So we'll see what they do, Leo Jackson and the teacher, the rest of the soul band of crew. We know he'll take on a tank of fuel. Uh, and we know they'll at least change black side tires. I would think they'll change four tires. Gary is also way down at the far end of pit road toward turn number one. Almost overshoots the pit area and gets in front of the car over that white line, but he is okay. There go uh, those running up front as the work is going on on Gans car. And yes, indeed, it will be a four tire change for Harry. But he's going to gamble on running 50 laps on Scott Hank. Yes, he had to change four tires. Now he is down in the way as he leaves. Ernie Irvin is on the middle, is in the middle of the back straightaway. So. He will be able to run as fast as the leaders for a good while with those fresh tires, maybe even faster. But he can never catch them. So there is the leader of the race now, Ernie Irvin. Second place is Davey Allison. Third, Bill Elliott. And fourth is Darrell Walter. Jerry Punch has a report on Davey Allison. Well, actually, guys, we'll find out how Davey's feeling. It's the longest he's been in the race car since his injury four weeks ago. He's been in the car about two and a half hours. And Larry... How is Davey feeling physically? Well, I think he's feeling pretty good. He complained back about halfway, maybe about his ribs bothering him just a little bit. But he hasn't complained about his arm or his wrist. And if he was going to have a complaint, I'm sure he'd tell us about it because the car's got a push in it that we can't get out. That makes him have to fight the steering no more. Got 50 to go. We'll just see what happens. That's Larry McCrindle, the crew chief for Davey Allison. Jerry, we had a call from Dr. McLaren, who, who is Davey's uh, doctor down there. Alabama, I guess, and, and said that he was pretty proud of the way that, that Davey has stood up here today. He tags the uh, information sent to us by saying, let's hope for no more injuries, and we'll second that. Yes. Okay, Bill Elliott now going to the inside of Davey in the battle for second spot.
Elliott takes the spot away from Darrell. I think he will take it away. Ooh, can move up. Is he going to move up? Yeah. Fish tail a little there coming out of the corner. So Elliott moves to third now. Darrell fourth and Kyle fifth. That's how they're running at the current moment with 156 laps completed. We'll be back with more live coverage in a moment from Michigan International Speedway. These Davey Allison, Bill Elliott, Darrell Waltrip, and Kyle Petty at the end of 157 laps in the Champions Park Plug 400 from Michigan International at 4.30 this afternoon. You can see the finals of the Thriftway ATP Championship. Now the uh, Men's International Tennis Tournament featuring a purse of $1,400,000. You will see it here on ESPN. And then tomorrow night at 8 o'clock, NFL preseason action continues with Mike Patrick and Joe Theismann calling the action of the Detroit Lions and the Buffalo Bills. That's at 8 o'clock tomorrow night here on ESPN. Back at Michigan International, there's the separation between first and second, third, and fourth. Not much difference in the second, third, fourth. First place is out about 15 car lengths. Well, Ernie drove out there at about that, about that much lead then, and he's not being able to drive away. And look how high his car went in the corner. It looked like his car all of a sudden started pushing up the hill. Most of these, in fact, all of these cars only took on right side tires. Only a few of them changed all four tires during that pit stop. Mark Martin and Alex Wicky, but they're way back in the pack now. But I'm sure that they are wishing they had some fresh left side tires on this car. race 
11th in the point standing, some 357 behind a year ago at this time. Ernie Irvin was third in the point standing. In the first eight races, he didn't have a single top ten finish. Three wins and seven top fives in the last ten races and has moved from 23rd to 11th in the points since the month of May. So with some early trouble in the season, Ernie Irvin is beginning to put his season back together and we ask him as we see him come up and put another lap on uh, the King Richard Penny. We ask Ernie if next year's long-term contract and sponsor support has helped him settle down here in the second half. Yeah, it does. Uh, a lot of things to help me is just uh, getting more content in my racing. You know, uh, not in, in the controversy that we were before, uh, making less mistakes, and um, you know, just being there and, and racing and um, having a better time now. Um, things are more comfortable as far as personal life and things like that with Kim, and and just things are going well for Ernie Irvin and more than before racing. So we feel comfortable. Ernie Irvin sounds like a pretty happy guy, and he should be today because he's leading this race. So as we indicated a few laps ago, there has been no one real dominant car. I would have to say that he probably has been as dominant as anybody else. Yeah, I don't think there's any question about it. Bob, you mentioned as we were, as he was passing Richard Petty there a moment ago, that was, uh, Petty was in the lead lap up until then. He is currently running at the 16th position, so that leaves 15 cars in the lead lap. Still trying to get that low groove to work for it. Trying to get by Bill Elliott. Can't make the pass. Has to fall back in behind him. And so with 167 of 200 completed, we'll take another break and be back in a moment at Michigan. Champion Spark Plug 400 in Michigan. Ernie Irvin is the leader of the race. There he goes by Eddie Beard Wall. Eddie is 28 on the field, about seven laps back. Then, better get your salt and pepper out. Yep, I might have uh, something to eat here. Huh? Say, your <laughs> We're talking about the fact that Ned said a few laps ago that he didn't think that Harry Gant would win the race if, they, if it stayed green the rest of the way. You think you might want to back that I think I'm going to have to eat through. I think he will win the race if it stays green. Everybody else is going to have to stop it. He's sitting there now about 18 seconds behind the leaders and running a little bit faster than they are with those four new tires. And they can't get in and out of the pits in 18 seconds. I don't think they can either. I think it's going to take 18 seconds to get down mid road. And they got to stop getting a little bit of gas. they got to slow down. So I think it's looking pretty good. It really is if there's no other caution. So uh, my apologies to Harry and to Leo Jackson for even thinking such a thing. Uh, where is Harry? He'll be coming here directly. Directly. Let's see, where's there's Dale. Greater. There, there he is. is. All right. So that's, he's going in turn three, and the Ernie Irvin is going in turn one right now. And it's ninth at the moment, but... Everybody running in front of him is going to have to have a splash of fuel if we go green the rest of the way. And we don't believe that Gant will have to because he ran 50 laps. And that's when he came in with 50 to go. He ran 52 laps and he stopped at 51 to go or something like that. Yeah. Right. So this thing isn't over by any means. Although... Allison's making a pit stop. 
Well, we'll see. Does he just take on fuel, or does he change the right side tires? With, 70, with 26 laps to go, I think he'll change tires. I think he will, too. Now, I said right side. They changed right the last time, Jerry. Will they change four, or left side, or right side, or no? Well, well good guess, Ted. We'll, we'll watch to <laughs> see what they do. Looks like they are going to change at least two tires, and probably only two tires. Right side tires going up, and we'll get it full of fuel. They're looking at the left side tire. Under the green flag, he's off and away. Okay, so that's his strategy. Stop as early as he can. Get those right sides on. Pick up that speed with new tires on for, if you can do that for five or six laps, you might be able to pick up five or six seconds. Exactly. Watching for Ernie Irvin to come around. There he is. And Dave is way out in front of that, so he stays in the lead lap, even if the caution should come out now. It wouldn't really hurt him that bad. Except Harry Gant is now about a half a lap in front of David. You're right, the caution light didn't hurt David. If he goes green, Gant's about a half a lap in front of him. So Harry's going to end up at least a quarter of a lap ahead of all these cars that make this car. And meanwhile, Bill Elliott's about to catch Ernie Irvin. Ernie Irvin has never won a race at Michigan. Here comes Kyle Petty in for a stop. Same deal. They want to get those fresh tires on to give the driver all the time to use them up. And running down ahead of uh, Kyle is Dale Earnhardt. Let's go down to Jerry Punch once again for Kyle's stop. Well, Benny Parsons, you're exactly right. Robin Pemberton has made the call. They saw Davey Allison come in early and get fresh right side tires. That's exactly what last week's winner here is going to do to the Mellow Yellow Pontiac. Right side tires. Robin Pemberton finishes the right front. Right rear. Jack down. And Kyle lights it up headed down pit road. Less than 11 second pit stop, Kyle Petty. Dale Earnhardt also made a pit stop while Kyle was in the pits. Dale was not far from going to lap down out of the racetrack. There is Irvin and Bill Elliott. We understand that Bernie Irvin is going to pit in three more laps. We'll see if that holds true. Right now he's leading this race and we will be right back. The champion Spark Plug 400 at Michigan International Speedway with 21 laps to go. Hunt Strickland's coming in awfully slow. I bet maybe he ran out of gas, huh? Looks that way because he is slow and no smoke coming after the car. Richard Petty's in. He has stalled the car, or the car ran out of gas. He probably ran out of gas, and they're trying to get the car going now. It fires his way. Richard Petty was 15th when he here, came in. Here comes Ernie. The leader is Petty. Bill Elliott stayed out, so he's the leader, but here comes Ernie Irvin. I don't think they're putting tires on this car. They're not out there. There's they're no one out with gas. tires. I just think they're going to put the gas in the Kodak Film Chevrolet. Let's see. No, they're definitely not going to put any new tires on. It's just going to be enough gas to finish the race. 20 laps to go. Smart idea? I don't know. We'll see. Austin Kyle Petty, we'll see where they stack up. Jerry, why uh, the decision to just go with the fuel? They felt that was their only chance of beating that old man they call him, Harry Gant. Said, if we don't just take fuel only, Harry will win this race, so this is our only shot. As Bill Elliott makes his way down pit road, headed toward John Curtis. John? Jerry, likewise for Bill Elliott, the crew. Tim Brewer looked to check Davey Allison's speed after he changed those two tires. There wasn't going to be enough of a difference, so we're looking at probably three and a half, four seconds in here. One tank, they only need about eight and a half, nine gallons of gas. Elliott gunning the engine. Now they say, yes, let's go. Bill Elliott is away. Seven seconds. And his teammate, Sterling Marlin, came in just, a, just while he was getting the fuel, and Sterling now pulls back out. Was the, were they letting the air out of the right side? Right rear tire on Bill Elliott's car. Could have been. Could have been. That would help the handling of the car, especially with these radio tires. Mark Martin comes down pit road. Now there's the leader of the race, Darrell Waldrop. The fellas, Harry Gant went by Ernie Irvin when he was in the pit. So if, if the strategy was to, to try to beat Harry Gant, he's, he had four tires. There's a little adjustment on his car. But Harry Gant changed four tires on his car when he made his last pit stop. So. He's in better shape power wise than everybody else, really. Mark Martin takes the valve lean forward out of the pit area. Looks like Bobby Hillen may be out of gas, too. He's coming in pretty slowly. Team Ireland car sliding to a stop, and now Alan Kowicki comes 
off the banking and heads down pit road as he gives up his 11th position for a pit stop. The only chance he has is just put some fuel in the car just as flash and get back out just as a jury punch. And, and, that's, and, that's, and that's what they're going to do, Benny, just put a little bit of fuel in the car and hope that possibly the pole center may have some chance to get a top five finish. Boogie is gone. Gentlemen, they have 34 more miles to go. That's a third of a tank of gas or a little more, so they've got to get about seven gallons in the car to be able to make it to the end. Morgan Shepard coming down pit road and the Sitco board. Morgan was fifth. They're not using the radio because the radio might malfunction. You're getting up in front of the fender where Morgan can see them, and they're giving the signal to go. Brett Lodine, who has moved up to second, coming in for his pit stop, and Jerry Punch is there. And we'll see what our Western Auto mechanic of the race, Donnie Richardson, has called for Brett Lodine. Looks like fuel only. Lodine brings the car to a halt. They have one can of fuel going in, puts it back in gear. Three seconds he's sat here, and he's gone. Wow, I wonder if he got enough fuel in that car. Fred is still looking for his first top five best, top five finish of the year. Bobby Six Hamilton, his best at Darlington. There's Walter, he's still leading. Bobby Hamilton, Rusty Wallace, Wally Dolan back, all in the pits. And Darrell, he can't go the rest of the way. No, I don't think so. He, he, you know, we had thought that a little bit earlier, but about a lap after that, he came into the pits. He had like 55, 54, 55 laps ago. He stopped on 137, so we had 63 laps oh, yeah. to go. There ain't no way. Just hoping for a caution right now. Yeah. Coming up on the 23rd place car of Terry Labonte, number 94. And Darrell coming in. John Kernan will call this stop by Darrell Walker as he enters pit road on lap number 186. John? The crew's awaiting the arrival of Darrell Walter. We told you 65 miles an hour down pit road. Darrell comes in a little bit hot. They're going to need, they told me, about three and a half, four seconds to get enough fuel in. They say, go, go, go. Darrell is away. Harry Gant now crosses the start and finish line and down the Dale Jarrett's pit as he goes down pit road to Dr. Jerry Park. And Jimmy Maycar will bring the crew across the wall. In fact, they will just put a little bit of gas in the car, left side of the car, no tire change for the interstate battery crew. And the car that came from one lap down, Dale Jarrett, is now away. He was being shown in the second place car. About three and a half seconds in the pits, and he heads back to turn one. So now is Gant the leader? He is now. Yep, yep. He is indeed. Now the question mark, can he make it the rest of the way? That's, that's the only thing that will keep him from winning. 14 laps to go. 186 completed. The average speed of the race to this point is 141.156 miles an hour. In just 11 more laps, we'll know who wins the 19th race of the NASCAR Winston Cup season, the Champion Spark Plug 400 at Michigan International Speedway near Brooklyn. Our Speed World coverage on this event is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Quaker State, the big Q is one tough motor oil. And by Goodyear, number one in tires. Harry Gant is the leader of this event with 10 laps to go. Daryl Waltrip is second, and third is Bill Elliott. And Jerry Punch is in Harry's pit. We're standing beside Andy Petrie, and this has to be somewhat poetic justice after what happened to you in Atlanta where you lost one on fuel mileage. Yeah, you know, this ain't over. While we're talking, the caution come out. You know, these things can go either way. You know, we're doing in a pretty good spot right now, but, you know, I'd like to talk to you after the race. No, no concern at all about fuel, though. You can make it the rest of the way. I feel pretty good about it, you know, but uh, like I say, you just never know. I felt good about it at the Pocono, you know, down the there. I think it'll be good. That's Andy Petrie, cautiously optimistic that Harry Gale will pick up win number two here in 1992. Yeah, he was a winner at the Dover race uh, earlier this year, and is fourth in the point standings, only 40, make that 140 points behind Bill Elliott, so this will help his drive for the 1992 NASCAR Winston Cup. He has about a little over a nine-second lead right now. 
He's lost about a half a second since everybody made their pit stops to Darrell Walker, but Darrell doesn't have enough time, maybe a half a second or left, to catch him. And will try to enter his name into the winners at Michigan category. He has never won here in Michigan. His best finish was a second back in 1981. Looking for the 17th car, who's currently running second. There he is. Bill Elliott, the red car, right behind him. Well, they're over here to pull away a little bit from Elliott now. He has closed the gap to eight and six ten seconds, but there are all less than eight laps to go. Yep. 
I think the thought crossed his mind. I think I'll pass Darrell for second. <laughs> well, Ned, you got the salt and pepper ready, huh? Yeah, I got it ready. I'll, <laughs> I'll eat the crow. <laughs> yeah. Here's lap 198. No, 99. There's the white flag. The white flag is out, and Harry Gann has one more lap to go to victory. An unbelievable situation as we watch that battle there for second. Now we focus our attention on the leader, Harry Gant, and it appears as if Harry is going to win his second race of 1992. Brett Lodine has run out of gas as he went by and got the white flag. I said when he made his pit stop, you know, it was a three-second pit stop. I said, I don't know if they got enough gas in that thing. Now, does that, that give me a little bit back for making that other big mistake? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Harry Gann on the top of the racetrack in turn number four, coming down off the banking. He sees the checkered flag from Doyle Ford waiting, and there it is. Gant wins with excellent fuel mileage. Now back to second and third. It's Waldrop crossing the stripe. Bill Elliott is third. Here comes fourth place Ernie Irvin, and fifth goes to Davey Allison. Sixth was Kyle Petty. Seventh will be Sterling Marlin. Congratulations to the old man, Harry Kent, who played it smart and it worked out for him. Fuel mileage stretched to the nth degree and up to carry Gant to victory in the Champions Spark Plug Foreman. We'll be right back. Lane time here at Michigan International Speedway in the Champions Park Plug 400. Our Kodak Gold Winner Circle interview. Here's Dr. Punch. And Harry Gant climbs out of the car. Congratulated by Andy Fitch and Fritchie. Harry, congratulations. 24th to first. It hasn't never been done here at uh, Michigan, but you did it today. Well, uh, you know, the car really ran good today. We kept coming in early and making adjustments, and uh, we knew it wasn't going to really hurt us a lot because there's a lot of cars we could beat, and we knew the ones we had to beat at the end, so... Uh, we kept just, and we finally get the test in real good shape. And the last time we pitted, Andy says, go a little further. I says, man, it's certainly just in good now. He says, but go six more laps. Go all the way to the fuel pressure drop, and we could make it. So that's what I did. And the last set of tires was the super best set I had all day. So I, I never really had to run. You know, he kept saying safe fuel, and he kept calling out the sequence to everybody else. And uh, so uh, when we had it ready, we didn't have to run until we won it. <laughs> and Leo Jackson, I think his heart skipped the beat. I understand the car fluttered on that final lap. Yeah, it, uh, it, 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 the fuel pressure dropped, and it got behind the straighter, and it picked back up. Uh, you know, uh, when I got in the corner, then the car picked up down the back stretch, started cutting off again, and I managed to get behind Kenny again, and coming in the third turn, it almost quit there. And coming off the corner, it would pick it up, folks, and I was able to draft him down. But we had a pretty good lead. I like to say hello to Peggy and all my family, you know, and back there watching on TV today. Uh, grandson, uh, John Derrick, and Allie, my granddaughter. Harry, you're not out of the points picture. You talked about Allison and possibly uh, Bill Elliott or Alan Kowicki. You're fourth in the points, and this is your time of the year. Well, we'd like to, uh, you know, just keep running here and uh, picking it up and win some races here in September and more for the end. We got to to win the championship. We have to pick up more points, and we're trying to. As fresh as he looks, can you believe it, folks? He's 52 years old. He looks like he's 32. Harry Gannon, victory lane at Michigan. Very intelligent race by Harry Gant, and congratulations to him and the pit crew who uh, worked out the strategy. Here are the unofficial results now of this race, with Elliott third, Irvin fourth, and Davey Allison fifth. Six through ten, Petty, Marlin, Dale Jarrett with a good run, Mark Martin, and Morgan Shepard. Do you think Harry was lying to us about running out of gas, man? I don't make it sound good, though. <laughs> I'm very dramatic. He told it with the straightest face oh, in the world. Harry wouldn't tell a lie. No, no sir. He's too uh -huh. uh -huh. straight and honest. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Earnhardt uh, finishes 16th after starting at the back of the pack in 41st. King Richard Petty with an 18th place finish here at Michigan. Rusty Wallace all, all the way back in 21st. Musgrave 25th. Yeah, Musgrave had a great run here in June. Sure did. Yeah. Led the race for a while or got up near the front. Ran out of gas near the end of the race. 31st through 35th now. McClure, Marcus, Cope, Lake Speed with the fire. Stanley Smith finishing in 35th. Then Ricky Rudd, who had a crash. Stan Fox crashed. And Jeff Bodine was involved in the early crash along with Greg Sachs. They finish in 40th and 41st. Now let's talk about the points for a moment here. In terms of uh, Elliott and Allison, it's 2796 to 2759. Gant now goes to third in the point standings. Alan Kowicki from third to fourth. Mark Martin staying in fifth place in the quest for the cup standings. Yeah, Kowicki really got hurt today. We're getting to the point of the season that you see 
need to start going forward and Kawicki went backwards. Well, coming up at 4.30 this afternoon, tennis here on ESPN, the Thriftway ATP Championships. That's from Mason, Ohio at 4.30 this afternoon, less than an hour from now. In terms of NASCAR Winston Cup racing, we take the uh, weekend off next week. Football coming up, I would like to remind you, tomorrow night at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern time as the Detroit Lions and the Buffalo Bills go at it. We'll take the weekend off next weekend. NASCAR Winston Cup has the uh, weekend off. We will be at Bristol International Raceway on Saturday night, August 29th, for the Bud 500, where the defending champion is Alan Kowicki. Our congratulations to Harry Gant, who used fuel mileage to win the champion spark plug 400, for Ned Jarrett, Benny Parsons, Dr. Jerry Punch, and John Kernan. This is Bob Jenkins. Thanks for watching. So long, everyone.